Greetings, folks. Michael Rosso here today to talk to you about the DeJure 8 Eldorado. But before I begin, I want to quickly say thank you to John Fideli, who's behind John the camera today. Fidelli. The twist. Eldorado. So the DeJure camera company was in Connecticut, and it was started by Ralph and Harry DeJure. In the <laughs> Is that for real? For real. In the 1920s. And they sold all types of shit. <laughs> they sold like copiers and machines. And at some point they decided to get into um, cameras. And it's debatable whether this was made, imported from Japan, or as stated here, de jour made in USA. True oh. or false? You decide. So this is the de jour 8 Eldorado. And this camera actually belongs to our newest FPP member, Carlos. So this camera was introduced in the late 1950s. It comes with a fixed 13 millimeter lens. You could open it up to 1.9, which is good. And you could stop it down, changing the aperture to all the way to F22. Many times when you're shooting with eight millimeter cameras, when you're outside in blazing sun, you need that extra stop. Many cameras, Stop to f16. That's a very small aperture to keep most of the sunlight out. But that one extra stop eh, <laughs> to f22 is very important. And of course, the light is coming through your lens and hitting the focal plane of your camera where the film lies. And I'm going to show you that in a second. On the front of your camera, very simple. Here is your uh, shutter button. You could either hold it or lock it. And if you push it up, you could do single frame. Very nice. On this side of the camera, very simple, is your counter showing you how much footage you have left. Start to finish. That's really key. This camera takes no batteries. It's fully manual. You just wind it up and you just kind of wind it till you feel it either getting tight uh, or it stops. On this side of the camera, here is your eyepiece that you look through. Uh, you're not looking through the actual lens. It's called a parallax. You're looking through this viewfinder here. There's no focusing. It's a it's a fixed focus camera, which which is awesome. This is. Ah, let's see if this lens comes off. Ah, oh, it does. This is a D mount lens, and I guess you could. This is a 13 millimeter. I guess if you put a telephoto on it, you could. There's a little, in the eyepiece, there's a little square in the middle. That's how you would um, designate your shot if you were putting a telephoto lens on here. Tripod socket. On this side of the camera, <sighs> this really messes people up a lot. The average ISO of a new movie film is 40 ISO, which is decent for this camera. But these charts that date back to the 1950s, the ISO film was uh, very different back in the 50s, so if you use this chart, you're really going to get effed, in my Not opinion. Have stopped. That's right. Use, Please do use a handheld light meter. Okay. Inside the camera. It's a little button here. You turn it, open your camera. There's the inside of what your camera looks like. Uh, this camera takes regular 8mm film, also known as double 8. If you don't know what double 8 film is, I'm going to tell you. Double, <laughs> double eight film is 16 millimeter in width, uh, and your camera, your eight millimeter camera, shoots it twice. So it's not 16 millimeter film, even though it is 16 millimeter in width. The sprocket holes are, sp are perforated differently, which delineates it from 16. So when you, when I say you shoot it through your camera twice, you'll be shooting through your camera. It'll shoot one side, and you'll see two eight millimeter frames side by side. And then when you're done shooting, you will take the film out, flip it, and then shoot the other side. And then you shoot the second side of your film, giving you two side-by-side 8mm -side frames that are either slit in the lab to give you 50 feet of 8mm film. This is probably what folks are used to seeing. Right, John? Mm -hmm. Or if you're shooting in negative film, it remains 16 millimeter and it gets slit electronically. What's important to know? Well, it's important to know that when you're loading your camera, the dull emulsion side, that's the light sensitive side, needs to face out towards your lens. The light's coming in through your lens, hitting the film and then hitting the emulsion side. The other side is your shiny base side and you don't want to shoot through that. You could only load this film one way. So with this particular camera, which is a little different than most cameras that I've reviewed on this, channel you have your film gate which is very important and you have this pressure plate the pressure in order to load this camera 
you have to pull down on this lever here. Watch this. Oh, Look at that. That's easy. Yeah. Then to close it, there's this green button here. Watch. Like a trap oh. fucking door. Nice. To load your film, here's your take-up spool. Let's let's take the take-up spool out for a second. And let's place our film on the post, uh, emulsion side facing the lens. Now notice that if you w try to load it the wrong way, it's not going to go. Thank, thank goodness these spools are meant to go one way. There are arrows in the camera, but you just basically put the film in between the film gate and the pressure plate. Pressure. Once you close the trap door, you can't get the spool on because this is in your way. So with the door still open, see that? Okay. Now you put your film on the take-up spool. Same thing one way. Follow the arrow. Great. Terrific. Now I'm going to close the door. Okay. So we should be good to go. Let's see. Whoa. This is your metal take-up spool that always remains with your camera when you're done shooting says here, film when on this spool is only half exposed. Remember? I told you about the... Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. I remember. All right, good. Thank you, John. You seal up the cave. <laughs> now, when you once you start shooting, do not open this door because you will expose your film. Believe me. And don't think that I am immune to doing stupid things because I do it all the time. Like, you're shooting and you're like, oh, ah, it's got to be done, right? You know, you're in blazing sunlight and you open this door and what you're going to do is flash your film and that's no fun. You'll ruin your film. Don't do it. So what we're going to do now is shoot side one. This is a short test roll, so this will not take very much time at all. Oh, hear that? Once you shoot side one, find yourself some shade. The first thing you need to do is open up the trap door. Whoa. Right. Take out your take-up spool, which is now filled with film, and you flip it, and then you take off your original film roll, which is now empty, and you flip it. Side two, same procedure. Put it on there. So see it fits nice. Slide it in between the pressure plate and the film gate. Beautiful. Take your take-up your take spool. Okay, now it's in. Hit the green button. Good. Oh, it's working. Seal the cave to wind up your camera. You'll get about 20, 30 seconds per wind. And now you're ready to shoot side two. Oh, you could hear the motor sound change mm -hmm. when the film ran out. Ready to put your film back in its container. Open the trap door. Take your film, put the rubber band that came with your film on it to keep the film in place, and then take, and then take, and then take, and then take your film and put it in the tin or black bag that it came with and hopefully send it to the Film Photography Project to develop and scan. Take, 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 take your original spool metal that came with the camera, and now you're ready for your next big adventure. Aha! Won't go on. Why is that? You have to close the trap door. Okay, so that's really it. Uh, you're ready for your next big adventure? Oh, hey, we have new videos every week here at the FPP. We're concentrating on double eight, regular eight millimeter film. Have any questions? Do drop us a line or leave a comment down below. And of course, don't forget to smash that button and ring that bell. Come on. <laughs>